you know, it's really important to understand the role that folks like Denise have, uh, the amazing capability that they bring being there directly with these different tech directors across AFRL and being that liaison with AFWorks uh, to bring in those technologies, reach out to those small businesses. And so thanks so much for your partnership and, and to all of the RI team there, uh, the exciting work that is happening in your space uh, today with trusted AI in particular, but across the scope of capabilities that you're bringing to our department of the Air Force is truly phenomenal. And that is both our air and our space force. I want to take a few minutes today to talk about what we're doing in AFWorks and how we see a huge opportunity in events like this to really harness more effectively the innovation ecosystem of our nation. And I can't think of a better place as we look to the future and imagine all of the phenomenal things. And I certainly don't uh, pretend to be an AI expert in any form or fashion, especially among the distinguished speakers that you all have uh, here for this event. But I think we all can certainly imagine the importance that this could have to certainly our warfighting capability. But we in AFWorks really look at it a little bit differently in when we go to many of the emerging technologies, we see them not only as something to help our Department of the Air Force, but these are key technologies that maybe, if done effectively, our Department of the Air Force can unlock for our entire nation and our partners, both from a military perspective as well as a civil perspective, helping to create a resilient infrastructure. And we've seen many examples of this. Uh, lots of folks from DARPA here. Uh, I had the opportunity to work out at the Space and Missile Center. Uh, about to get its new name, uh, on a program like Global Positioning System. Uh, 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 and those programs, those dual use technologies have had a phenomenal impact on our everyday lives. I mean, imagine the number of times that you go to, to your phone, uh, how many people are getting out maps anymore? How many people could, could actually drive to their home effectively from, from different places without a technology that was very much fueled by the Department of Defense and eventually picked up by the commercial sector? What we see in AFWorks today, as we look across this broader ecosystem, as we look at this strategic context where we live today, one where over 80% of research and development is happening in the commercial sector, a world where our national defense strategy is telling us we must look differently at partnership with commercial technologies. Commercial technologies that our national defense strategy Say, it says will fundamentally change the future of warfare. And so here at AFWorks, that is one of our key objectives, making sure that we are partnering with those innovative technology developers that are out there, like in artificial intelligence, like in trusted artificial intelligence, with our airmen and our guardians across our air and our space force, and doing it in a way that helps us bring agile, affordable capability accelerated to our warfighters. And as I said, really unlocking that potential. And so I want to talk a little bit about this, this structuring. So AFWorks at a high level, uh, a budget just under a billion dollars and that budget largely funding for small businesses that are out there, finding the way to reach to those small businesses, provide an open door and then bring that technology. And so I'll talk a little bit about that structure that goes across three different areas. The first is AF Ventures, and you'll hear from Jason Ratchy, the director of AF Ventures, a little bit later on today. I'll spend a little bit of time on how we see AF Ventures as that front door. The next is Spark, and this is our airman and guardian talent across our Department of the Air Force. And the last is Prime. On uh, this is the potential of being able to bring these technologies to fruition across this valley of death. So when we look at AF Ventures, AF Ventures is really this capability, uh, the open door to industry, the small businesses that are out there that have capabilities, in many cases, uh, small businesses that might not have ever worked with the Department of the Air Force before. Over the last few years since we have started the AF Ventures program, we brought over 1,800 companies into the Department of the Air Force. Of those, over 70% of those companies are new to working with the Department of the Air Force. And so we're very intent on creating those new methods for companies who have really no 
touch points with this potential market in the Department of Defense to be able to have an easier path of initial entry and, and starting that conversation to see, in many cases, these are, these are companies who have done defense work for years and are very familiar. In other cases, this may be the first chance that they had to think a little bit differently about the market that they have available, a market that could be diversified beyond just a commercial use case and broadened into some military use cases. And many times these military use cases have broader impact across a wealth of public use cases. And we started to see that in our agility prime program that I'll talk to here momentarily. And so that is, that is our app ventures program. That technology that is emerging in the commercial sector, this dual use technology, what do we do to effectively bring those companies in as fantastic partners going forward in the mobilization, this whole of country effort in order to preserve not just the security, but also the prosperity of our nation. When we look to those technologies, though, as we start to think about turning technology into capability, one of the key steps is understanding how to use that technology. If there's not a concept of operation that can effectively turn that technology into capability, that can integrate effectively that technology into our concepts of operation, whether they be things as mundane as logistics or eventually potentially warfighting capability uh, of delivering fires of some sort. The technology really needs that entrepreneur thinking about how could this new tool be used in different ways? How could that unlock approaches to warfighting that we've never considered before? And so that's critical. That is a critical role that Spark plays, really creating internally new concepts for our Department of Defense, our Department of the Air Force, and externally creating new markets for the technologists that are out there that may not have considered a certain use case, initially maybe a military use case, but but in many times extrapolates into a public use case for civilian or a broader commercial use case. And we really believe that is one of the unique things in, in our spark, this, these thousands of entrepreneurs across our Air Force that are here is part of that overall AFWORKS effort. The third of these organizations as part of this overall AFWORKS is Prime. And, and Prime is there, you could have amazing technology, you could have phenomenal concepts for using that technology, but unless you can go through the rather complicated paths, right, a series of checks and balances necessary to meet a high demand. And what is that high demand? Well, when we are in the business of capability development in the Department of Defense, really a grave responsibility that you have on the folks here across AFRL, RI, across our lab, across our Air Force Materiel Command, uh, across the Space and Missiles Center as well, as they take taxpayer dollars and turn it into warfighting capability. And you can look over the history where maybe those taxpayer dollars were not used as effectively. And every time that happens, we add an additional regulation to help create the proper checks and balance. Many times we find that we deliver a capability to the field and that capability might not be ready for the warfighter. Again, requiring additional checks and balances that result in additional regulation. As we have seen over the years, we have this mounting stack of hurdles to get across this valley of death. And it's, it's important because we do not want to misuse taxpayer dollars or provide capability that doesn't meet warfighter need. And so this created a series of checks and balances. What we believe in the prime program is that if we better enable 21st century techniques to meet those checks and balances, and let's be more specific, right? We're talking about different approaches to funding, funding methods inside of a two-year budgeting cycle that still allow the means for clear oversight by our appropriators in the Congress. When we look at a flying vehicle, how do we make sure that it's meeting that high standard of airworthiness so that we know we can overfly folks safely in these aircraft and we can deliver passengers or cargo safely? That, that airworthiness requires those checks and balances. Getting onto our networks, how do we ensure that we meet all of the risk management criteria in order to operate on our networks? How do we create contracts that have flexibility but still provide all of the necessary competition that have the appropriate credibility in the evaluation of the technical systems to make sure they meet that criteria. So there's a, a list of 
steps that are necessary to take that capability, right, that technology combined with Warfighter concept and deliver that to the field. That's what Prime is all about. So between App Ventures bringing in the technology, Spark bringing in the talent, and Prime transitioning that into capability, we have really done a lot to restructure AppWorks over the last year. And the success of AppWorks is 100% dependent on great organizations like AFRLRI being able to create that partnership, being able to bring forward the amazing technical credibility of the experts like you're seeing here in this forum today. And so as we do that, uh, as we look a little bit more deeply into App Ventures, the value we have seen is an ability to take in many cases this investment in small business research and in many cases partner with follow-on funding under this approach where every dollar of small business funding is turning into another six dollars of follow-on funding whether that be commercialization through another contract with the government or whether that commercialization be through some follow-on contract with external governments as as denise said you know, we have to look what is what is the purpose of the small business investment and it's really to ensure that companies have an incentive to make internal investments in small companies with really big ideas and turn those small companies into large companies that really have the ability to change our future in technology, our future economy. And we've seen instances of that, of several of the companies that we've had in this app ventures process, uh, even specifically uh, ones in this agility prime program that I'll talk to in more detail. Uh, in that program itself, just over the last year, three of those companies have grown from small businesses to achieving that unicorn status of a billion dollar evaluation. And, and that's the try, the work that we're trying to do is to take the phenomenal capability in the Air Force Research Laboratory and across the Air Force Materiel Command, in many cases, providing a little bit of funding. But it, oftentimes, the value we've seen is taking the experts in the Air Force Research Laboratory, for example, and doing things like ground vibration testing to understand more clearly how an aircraft is going to operate and fly an entirely new aircraft. Uh, it is that non-monetary piece that we found among many of our partners in AFWorks that really starts to unlock those markets and starts to show a level of credibility of these emerging technologies that really might not have happened otherwise. And, and when we start to think about artificial intelligence, that when we look across our Af ventures portfolio, that is the biggest investment that we are making right now in AFWorks is in that artificial intelligence capability. But as you all know, if we can't trust that AI, if we're not able to have those automated procedures done in a way that we can reliably repeat, uh, that we can depend on in the most critical times, then all of the potential that is there uh, for our nation's economy and for our warfighting capabilities certainly is at risk. And so that's what's so exciting to me about this intersection with small businesses and with the experts that you have here in RI to begin to understand what does it take to create those trusted AI systems. And, and as we go forward, I think that's what we found as we look more deeply into our Spark is those use cases that are out there for AI and then as we start to think about moving those across this valley of death, how do we create the proper testing, the proper certification for hardware, for software that ensures that AI can actually be used in a trusted way for the intended operational impact that we're trying to achieve. And I'll talk a little bit more specifically about, as we go into Prime, talking about a particular program uh, called Agility Prime. Agility Prime, actually gets really much to the core of, of some of the things we're talking about here with Trusted AI. So what is Agility Prime, right? This is the Air Force Flying Car Program. Uh, this, this idea that we've had this coalescence really of three technologies, the first being large electrical power systems, right? So think about uh, those automobiles that today are hybrid or electric. Secondly, thinking about the materials and manufacturing, again, a, another phenomenal center of excellence internal to AFRL, thinking about the future of, of materials of manufacturing, 3D printing, uh, many of the companies that we have in the small business arena that are making phenomenal strides in 
the types of exquisite materials that they're able to develop, uh, the, the components that they start to think about trust as well. How do we know that those type of components can be can be used? And so this second uh, from a materials and manufacturing key to this future that is being seen by the commercial sector in this electric vertical takeoff and landing or this flying car market. The third then is really the core of what we're talking about here today is the advances in microelectronics, advances in software, the advances in sensors bringing together multiple phenomenologies, tying them together with algorithms to get phenomenal understanding, situational awareness of where the vehicle is and how that vehicle can be operated effectively, whether that be a fully autonomous system in the future or maybe in the near term where the human continues to stay in the loop. But you have a level of automation, uh, what the industry is calling simplified vehicle operations that are creating opportunities for safety of flight that really we've never seen before. So this idea of those technologies coming together, a vertical takeoff and landing, think helicopter, but helicopters that allow distributed electric propulsion and by do, using that electric propulsion, that distributed electric propulsion, phenomenal new concepts of vehicle design, really exciting concepts for reducing the overall operations and maintenance costs, potentially as you start to move to scale, being able to take economies of scale and create these vehicles at an extraordinarily low cost at production levels that we really have never seen in post World War II era, in, in, when we start to see what this market might bring, a, mar a market that's been suggested to be into the trillions of dollars over the next 10 to 20 years, but it is predicated on the work that's happening here today. When we think about part of that operations and maintenance cost into the future, right? The ability, uh, you know, I had the fantastic opportunity to grow up in the Air Force as a fighter pilot for years. When we look to the future of these smaller vehicles, right? These we're talking something on the order of, you know, a three to six passenger vehicle. When we think about operations for logistics in the future for these types of vehicles, looking at ways of not necessarily having all of the folks that are operating these wearing, you know, these, these wings here, but an opera, an ability to very rapidly train individuals. And there's exciting things that have happened under our air education training command, being able to leverage things like artificial intelligence in accelerating learning, for example, uh, leveraging artificial intelligence and creating mechanisms to provide better safety in flight for our operators. And so again, the trust of those systems is 100% essential. And part of that trust is another area as we look at this agility prime one, we've, we've just over the last year, we've brought in over 20 different companies uh, of those companies. We have four of them who have gone through our airworthiness process here in the air force material command, an acceleration in innovation that many really didn't understand how quickly uh, you could bring in these technologies and understand these technologies and do it with a level of rigor that really only the Air Force Material Command knows how to do. That is providing feedback to these companies on building out this long-term market. But again, for that market to be effective, we must have trusted components, trusted microelectronics, and in the future, trusted AI components that allow us to eventually go to that world where everyone could be a pilot and everywhere could be an airport. You can imagine what that provides in terms of operational flexibility. But how do we make sure that that's safe? As an F-16 pilot, you know, there's been some phenomenal breakthroughs in autonomy just over the last few years. And that work again happened in the Air Force Research Laboratory, a phenomenal center of excellence for these types of technologies. And that Air Force Research Laboratory delivering on a capability for automated ground collision avoidance for the F-16. As an F-16 pilot, you know, a phenomenal machine, uh, electronic flight control system, the, the first electric jet as it is, right? Trust in these microelectronics at, a, at an early stage and the ability in F-16 uh, to go into a fight and pull very quickly uh, up to nine Gs. Uh, that nine Gs is phenomenal, creating a flexibility and agility uh, in the air, but it also has a phenomenal strain on the human body. Those nine Gs uh, instantly can put a pilot into a blackout situation going out of control. And we've lost tens of pilots because of that. But because of the work done through the Air Force Research Laboratory in autonomy, today we have now 
saved over 10 pilots' lives through the automated ground collision avoidance system, where if a pilot pulls those 9Gs and for whatever reason hasn't done the appropriate physiological straining to ensure that blood stays in the head and that pilot doesn't go unconscious, the aircraft, if the pilot does go unconscious, now will recover itself, fly level until the pilot wakes up again and flies home safely. And that has been phenomenal. That is a level of trust in our automated systems that, again, has already saved 10 lives, has saved about 10 aircraft, tens of millions of dollars for each of those aircraft. And so we can see the work you are all doing here today is essential to our nation's future. It's already done phenomenal things in our warfighting capability. And now as we start to create a better open door, we want more of the great minds that are out there in this innovation ecosystem to bring those ideas forward. I did great things in the F-16, but we think that's right. That is just the, the beginning of what's possible in terms of creating efficiencies, creating agility, creating safety as we go forward. And again, with this approach to AFWorks, we believe that is not only creating an opportunity for lighter, intelligent, modular, mobile, and sustainable systems for our agility internal to the Department of the Air Force. But in the, in the near term, it's actually causing, creating an opportunity really to take work that's being leveraged by the FAA to potentially revolutionize transportation, really to transform the things we're doing in national defense, to create essentially entirely new industries. And this approach of working together is really creating a, a collaboration across our government organizations that is a, a refreshed bureaucracy that's going to provide phenomenal opportunity for those innovators bringing the ideas out, taking them to the taxpayer and providing that capability for a safe and secure future. So again, I'll transition over to any questions that are out there. Deeply grateful for the opportunity uh, from Denise and the rest of the team here in RI uh, to have the opportunity to talk about the exciting things happening in AFWorks and very much looking forward to the fall on partnership with all of you. Thanks so much.